everyone. Welcome to my channel. I am Bonita, and if you're joining me for the first time, I'm going to give you just a little bit of history about myself. I was raised by Depression-era parents in the state of Kansas. My grandparents also went through the Dust Bowl days where Grandma talked about having to take like a wet tea towel and put it over the windows even though they were shut because so much dirt would blow in. And all of my parents and grandparents were farmers and they butchered, they raised all of their own food. And when I ran across my grandma's diary, even from 1947, where she kept track of all of her expenses and all of her income, there was no purchased food in any of that. The way she made money back then was she sold her cream to the co-op, she sold her eggs for 30 cents a dozen, and they worked in the Catalpa Grove cutting down trees for 50 cents a day. My dad and my grandpa did that, and my grandma trimmed the post to make fence posts out of them. So that's a little bit of the history. They, my parents continued to raise me like that, and I learned a lot from them, and then I grew up. I went my own direction. I got into some debt. I realized how important it was to be debt free and I have been frugal ever since. I have always been frugal, but I became even more frugal as I'm approaching retirement. So I hope you will find my conversations on here to be helpful. We have a lot of good frugal conversation that goes on in the comments. So feel free to stick around and join our community. Also, I wanted to tell you that one of the reasons I was frugal is I do have six kids and Education was stressed when I grew up. My dad was a high school dropout and I put all six of my kids through college. I paid for all of them to have a bachelor's degree by living frugally. I now have two that have doctorates, two that have master's degrees, one that has a bachelor's degree and one that's working on his PhD. We stressed education in this family. I know that a lot of times education gets a bad rap as far as people getting into debt, but this is something that I budgeted for and that I felt was important. So that's why I lived frugally for so long. So I wanted to go ahead and get started today by talking about living debt to debt free because I have had some debt and now I am this close to being debt free. I'll probably be debt free very, very soon. And so I wanted to share some of the concepts and thoughts that go along with that because it is a transition. I want us to think about debt not being normal. For many of us, debt is just normal. Mortgages are normal, car payments are normal, credit cards are normal. But when I was raised, none of that was normal. You saved your money before you bought something. You didn't have credit cards. You bought everything outright, even a vehicle. You saved money, you bartered, and you bought what you could afford. So I have gone back to a lot of that. My last car was paid for in cash. I have no car payment. I have no mortgage. And my house is very old and it is very traditional from about the early 1900s. I have one closet. It's very simple. It's drafty and cold in the winter time, but it costs me almost nothing to live here. I figured up that even with internet, I think it costs me about $300 a month to live here. So as you can see, I still live very frugally. So going from debt to debt free, maybe it feels like it will never happen to you. Maybe you already live that way and you're saying, hey, I'm already debt free. And if you are, that's terrific. Give us tips on how that feels and how you continue to do that. But making decisions to live frugally and throw in every single penny, nickel, dime towards your debt to get there, it is a transition. Uh, 
but it's the best decision you can make to make that transition from debt to debt free by saving every little penny and throwing it towards your debt it helps you make a plan on how you can adjust from the way you're living now to the way you are going to live then. And sometimes it's a little bit scary because for many of us, we use that credit card as a safety net. We use it as an emergency fund. Sometimes we even think that it's our money and we think, well, I have $3,000 I can spend because I have nothing on my credit card. No, it's not our money and everything we charge on there, we're going to pay double, triple, quadruple what we paid for it by the time we get it paid off unless we have a system to pay it off every single month and we make sure that that balance doesn't get away from us. Living without a credit card can be a frightening experience during that transition because we have used that as a safety net. It can be scary to think about only living on cash alone, but if you sit back and look at your numbers and you look at how much money you are putting towards interest, how much money you're putting towards payments every single month, and you think about the fact that none of that will be there, none of those payments will be there, none of that interest accruing will be there, you will realize that you actually will have more money left than if you lived on credit. It frees up so much cash that you end up not needing that credit. And I am certainly not blame free on having debt. I've been there. I know how tempting it can be to go out and buy something if you've never had the funds to do it. And now all of a sudden you have credit and you think, wow, I can have something nice for me. But in the long run, that something nice for you is going to make things harder. And I spent time thinking that certain types of debt weren't really debt. I remember times thinking that medical debt wasn't really debt. And when I wrote down what I owed, I didn't even write down the medical because I thought, well, I don't have to make a payment every single month, but they have started making people make payments and make plans to pay medical. A lot of times you have to pay that up front to even be seen. So that philosophy has changed over the years. But all debt holds us back from living our best life. Debt does not help us live our best life and have nice things. That is probably the biggest myth. You can have nicer things by not paying quadruple their price than having nice things and paying that exorbitant amount of money that you are charged to get the one nice thing. You can have more nice things by saving first and then using the money that you already have to buy something and remain debt free. Having debt most of our adult lives, it warps our idea of what debt is. We do tend to think that debt is normal. If you ever listen to people talk, they will just talk like their mortgage, their car payment, all of those things are normal. But if you listen to Dave Ramsey, and I know not everyone cares for him, he does have some good points in there. And one of his good points is, if you have a car that you're making car payments on, then you own more car than you can afford. I had to repeat that to myself a couple of times when I first heard it because I thought, that's crazy. And then when I thought about it, I thought, he's right. That makes a ton of sense. I am driving a car that is more than I can afford if I'm having to make payments. We will think that living on what we make is not normal. And it's so easy to access those lines of credit for anything that we want at any given time and not be made to wait until we can afford it. So going from debt to no debt can sometimes feel limiting. It can feel like somebody has a thumb on you, like you actually have a cap on how much money that you can spend. 
But if we think about how much money, how much time, how much mental energy it frees up for us to go from debt to debt free, it is so worth it. My friends, I wish this for you. I wish for you to experience that debt is not normal and to be able to find ways to save money through the tips and tricks that we give on this channel and share amongst us to find ways to free up those pennies, dimes, and nickels to throw at that debt so that you can be debt free. It actually opens the door for good things. It opens the door for time, self-sufficiency, confidence, peace of mind. It opens the door for so many things to go from debt to debt free and then stay there. So I hope this has been inspiring to you. Let me know where you're at in your debt free journey. Are you almost there? Are you already there? Are you scared that you can't stay there? And are you scared to live without credit? Let me know and I hope to see you in the next video.